Welcome back to my Gothic Grotto. I'm Thorne, I use he, him, his, and we're on episode 6 of the Midnight Ballroom Podcast. I should go ahead and introduce my co-host, this Beanie Baby Goat, is joining me tonight. His name is Ban Banros. For reasons I told about in a different episode. I hope you can see him. I like he's in frame on my camera, but it's a little bit wider, I've noticed than the YouTube video dimensions. Um, so I've noticed some of my text, even though I, I didn't put it all the way over on the edge of the screen, it's almost cut off. So I, I have to get something that will let me, like maybe there's a frame or something that you can put over your video to just let, let you see what will be seen <laughs> on YouTube. Anyway, this is Banros. My goat. He has an amazing array of colors, kind of tie dyed all over him, and pink and blue and green, sparkly hooves, and sparkly green horns. And these very intense little green eyes. Um, and a yellow beard, but he just sort of looks at you like, hmm. just kind of wondering, I, I feel like, and I'm, I'm using this coaster, which I bought at Cracker Barrel. It was in their mermaid section, because they did have a mermaid section. It was, it was nice. Um, it says forever a, a mermaid and has a mermaid tail. And it goes along with my cup. Oh, I'm, I'm using the coaster as a seat for him. Just gonna adjust the camera. So we make sure he's in the frame. Okay. You can also see my lamp, maybe. So I got the mug along with my Initial primary cup. That's what <laughs> primary and auxiliary mug. Um, which is my mermaid mug from Cracker Barrel. My mermag, if you will. Drinking Death Wish Dark Roast with French vanilla creamer because. Death Wish is delicious of Coffee Goes, and I, I, I do love coffee. Like That sounds like a Coffee Goes, but no, I love coffee, and trust me, Death Wish tastes delicious, but I just can't drink coffee on its own, because it's the the bitterness just really gets to me, um, so I'm, I need to have creamer in, in it, but once I do, uh, it's amazing. And I can't have dairy milk anymore because that's one of the things that I, I still can't really handle that and ice cream tastes so delicious <laughs> but I'm I, I recently became lactose intolerant stuff like that apparently tends to happen like you you develop intolerances or um, allergies when you're in an ongoing abusive situation like I was in my marriage. Talked a lot about that last episode. But anyway, I'm I've slowly gotten back I I wasn't expecting this to happen, but if but apparently I've gotten back to where I can have quite a lot of cheese before I have trouble. I just don't really feel like risking it with ice cream quite yet because that's so much lactose in one sitting but that's sad because 
lactose is delicious. So, right, my auxiliary mug. This pink one, which has a golden um, script on it that says Cheers Queers. I got it from Target during Pride Month. They, they just had one section that was like, Here, gays, give us some money for, um, rep to, to feel rep rep represented. And I was like, I know this is rainbow capitalism, but... I have a cute mug now, so I don't really care. Also, I got some outside flip-flops, which are rainbow, because I needed out outside shoes. Um, they're not actually flip-flops. I cannot wear those because it feels like a knife stabbing in, in between my toes, so they're actually the kind that just go over your whole foot, and that part is rainbow. So. It fulfilled a need and I got to be gay during it and also my I was there with my mom and she paid paid for it so I didn't I didn't even have to buy it <laughs> so it was it was like well there's no downside sorry someone was coming in or leaving but our door is so much quieter now you can barely tell Should I talk about first Ban Banros? Right. I was reading the book that his name came from earlier because I was asked to by some some relevant gods. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm 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 pagan as probably anyone who's watching this at this point knows, but like I am pagan, and this is a book written by a friend of mine and chosen brother who's also pagan. Go check out the episode that is that has this in the thumbnail. It's episode three. If you want to know more about it, but it's the book *Bicaro* by Brian Hewitt. And the, there's someone named Banros in there. So I'm I'm on an initiatory path in part of my practice that is recovered from gnosis, which means the gods and spirits themselves are the ones who are telling us like it, it's not from the from history or lore though that can help sometimes with um cor cor correlating what we find out from our gods and just like it it can be really cool to to find out that something you were told from a spirit or a deity is is also in the historical record or something and you didn't know that but i'm i've learned that like a lot of the path that a, a lot of what i'm being asked as a spirit worker and like in in the paths that i'm on is you need to just trust your um like you you can certainly verify and like ask your your gods to make sure that what you're hearing is cor cor correct or like you're you're understanding them correctly but a large part of it is you you have to be okay with the fact that you're at least this is this is my ex um experience i've i've been asked to you know be comfortable with the fact that i'm a lot of my experiences will not be able to be verified by other people and that's that's fine. Like they're they're still really um, valuable, and I think that I think that they're um, true. And I I have lots of friends who do as well, and those tend to be my closest friends. <laughs> um, just because we share the same like things that we treasure. So um, not sure if I explained that well, but anyway. In one of these stories, 
There's a small goat herd boy named Van Van Vanros, hence the name that I gave to my goat, who didn't have a name before. And um he's sort of the viewpoint character into the Vicaro order, or kind of like monks ish. phrase that just came into my mind is they're happy sexy monks and they dance a lot and sing for pagan gods basically um there's a lot more to it than that anyway that's one of the things i that's i'm one of the first picaro in the present day and age since i was asked to be quite unex um unexpectedly to me and my brother Brian is also one of them. And there, I'm excited to see if there there are more people called to this path. But so far, that I know of, it's it's just us. So, um. So anyway, this kid, <laughs> he's telling you like in it's written in first person this story. So like he's telling you the story of how he became the how he was called to join the Vicaro, called as in like the deity they sort of kind of chose him. But it was it was like a really subtle calling, if that makes sense. You, you just kind of feel drawn to something. So um, he he had um, so he started having these strange mystical dreams, and he mind you he is twelve, and his favorite dreams were the, the his favorite type of dream was the one where he goes up on the roof in his village and he shouts look at me i'm um i'm vicaro <laughs> and he's on fire as in like he's shining i think his skin is described as being made of gold also he's on fire as in he's really fired up about it and everyone looks at him and they're like whoa that's so cool and I'm just like, I relate so hard, I was that kid. I mean, not not that kid, but like, I, I was the one that wanted to be the, just like the good-hearted, innocent kid who just wants to have everyone share in his excitement about something. Like, that that was me. And, and, who's, and who enjoys being really dramatic sometimes. And I was definitely beaten down at a certain point um i mean like emotionally and I, and recently i've started recently i started um getting some of that back but i i i i do remember being that kid so yeah So, updates, I guess? <laughs> that was a long intro. Um, I guess they, I'll just title it, like, Introducing My Co-Host or something. Um, you know, I do have one more thought about co-host things. So, there's this wonderful YouTuber, I guess fellow YouTuber? That's weird to say. <laughs> Hello, YouTuber. Um, named well, her <laughs> her YouTube name is Jade Jade the Libra, um, and she mostly mostly what she does is she takes you around in her car. I mean, her her cameras in her car, and she drives around and looks for Hall Halloween de decor. And like in all of the major stores that we tend to have it and helps helps people just know what's out there. Um but she <laughs> in her passenger 
See, she has this life-size skeleton um, that she got at Costco or something, and his name is Mr. Skeleton. I totally have a crush on him. And um, she talks to him like a person, like, how... How are we doing to today, Mr. Skeleton? <laughs> or like when when he's flopping around, she's like, "Get it together, sir." Um. And as a witch and an animist, I feel I said like a person, but I feel like he is a person. Like, well, all in in my view, all objects are like they have their own type of life. But I think it's really cool that regardless of what she personally believes about that like in my view she's given him this life and i um identity in her um community that she's built or uh, on her channel and that's why it looks to me like i mean when i um see him he he always has the same ex um expression like like just imagine a uh, um, skeleton doing that, but he always looks really happy and um, excited, and like that's the vibe I get probably because I'm thinking, oh well, he he must be really happy that he's being seen and treated with dig, dig, dignity and per personhood. So I I just think that's really sweet, and um, obviously I approach it from a. Well, I don't know if it's more spiritual than she does, because she doesn't really talk about that, but it, a definitely spiritual point of view. But yeah, that's a similar idea. <laughs> I would love to also have a skeleton co-host, but I'll have to wait till I have more space. <laughs> um, so yeah, updates now. Um, I feel like I'm already doing a good job of my goal for this episode, which is talk about things that make me happy, um, because I haven't been doing too well the past couple days, and like this week has been a roller coaster. I feel really great about releasing my album last week and getting that episode up, the the podcast episode where I talked about all of all of the stories behind that. Um, the album tells the story of me leaving my um, abusive ex. And that was like a huge catharsis, but also really um, um, exhausting. And then there's just the, the situation is, that I'm in. My living situation is just wearing me out. Um, I do feel that I'm going to be moving to a better place for me soon. I just don't really know the specifics and kind of that waiting game is really hard. Especially when you're like at the end of the rope with Like, in, none of it's over, but there's just a lot of subtle um, erasure, and, like, as, as a trans man, as a pagan, um, as a person who would like to set any boundaries, as a autistic and traumatized person that has certain needs that I don't really think are that... Um, Un, um, unreasonable, and even if they were, I would love to have an open conversation about, well, what can we do instead? What would work for you? But that does not happen. So, um, and then like having, having to basically not acknowledge any of that when I'm interacting with some, some folks. <laughs> um, all of that is really intense, um, like a, a very in intense drain on me. So that's really hard. Um, but 
on the other hand, I've been basically directed by my gods to start looking at what makes me really happy and or I think what they said was with 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 the help of a, a friend who I was talking to I I realized I need to think about not just what I'd like to get away from but like and, and that's perfectly perfectly valid to be thinking about because if something hurts you want it to stop um, but what will actually help me, I think, find a direction is how do I want to feel when I'm doing my own thing? And I realized, well, I, I want to feel happy and focused and like I'm doing something creative, but also, um, in a really supportive and awesome community um, the, the I, I didn't think of all those words at first I actually thought of the way I feel during the live streams that Kayla at alt um, alt Mox does I don't know if you watch my podcast Kayla but cheers I encourage you to check them out. They are really cool. Um, she's a spooky crochet YouTuber. That's her whole thing. I and and I find her very inspiring because like I didn't know that other people were trying to make crochet more goth. <laughs> more goth. <laughs> I'm not the only one to make that joke, but as a as a Tolkien nerd, I had to. Um, Morgoth being the equivalent of Sauron from the Sil Silmarillion. Also, by the way, the camera goes dark for a couple minutes whenever the maximum file size is reached. So that's why I've been having the loading screen the past couple of times. Well, the, the past time that then I had like, phone, please, and <laughs> the previous time. So. However, we're, we're almost to the point where we can use my new phone because the case got here. And this is still the old phone. I'll show you the case. But I'll wait. Wow, that's a huge spike. <laughs> I'm just looking at the Audacity file. I'll, I'll try to lower the volume on that or cut it out. I'm not sure. Anyway. Testing. Oh. I'll try not to um, move my phone like this on the desk when I'm talking because it's hard to edit that out, but that's what was making it so loud. My pop socket is a noisemaker, apparently. So yeah, also, back to Altmots, she's inspiring because I'm like, yeah, all of my inspiration juice about crochet is coming back and like blossoming and becoming more intense, <laughs> more fully blossomed, <laughs> because I'm like thinking of all these new things I can do and I have people to show them to. And she's inspiring as a YouTuber because I want to create that type of community where people feel really welcomed and like I'm putting effort into seeing them, but also like seeing my, my audience members and um, remembering things ab about them, but also that, that it's like a The sideways motion is because the like the like two audience members also connecting. Yeah. 
that, that's what I was going for. So, I do have crochet later to show. But first, I'll go ahead and show my phone before it. Before we get to the point at which I'll want to end part one, because I want to try a recording part two on my new phone. Last time, that having the different parts seemed to work pretty well in terms of limiting the um, rendering and uploading speed, L limiting the slowness. The speed's already plenty limited. Anyway, my case is this beautiful shiny blue that I feel like it looks a little bit darker on camera than it is, but it's almost like it's between lapis lazuli and like sky blue, just beautifully in between those. And the pop socket is a very colorful shot of um, um, a nebula and stars, like red, green, and blue stardust. talked before about how you know how I get about blue like ever since I connected with um, the goddess I know as Inanna every time I see blue I'm just like oh my heart because it makes makes me think of her and apparently that's historical too like I'm told that really intense blues such as in Lapis Lazuli were sacred to her, or I know her by several names, so it could be like a different goddess who is also her, for me at least. Anyway, that's my understanding, and it seems to fit. And I was never like super into blue before now, but now I'm like, eh. <laughs> There's just something about it and it makes me want to cry and like, um, but in a good way. And when I see blue things sometimes at, at craft stores, I'm just like, must get that for Sun Mom. That's, that's what I call her. I've told this story before, but so, sometimes Gwen is fully on board with this, Gwen being my patron god. And other times he's like, whoa, hold your horses. <laughs> We're getting stuff for, for for you this time. You can get stuff for Sun Bong a, a different time. Like, you you have plenty of stuff for her. Which is true. Um, I, I just haven't... I, it hasn't told me what it wants to be for her. Or, or like, um, Inanna and Gwen haven't... revealed to me what all of my crafting supplies are supposed to turn into. I mean, of, of the stuff that I know is for them, but because that's the fun part. You just have to wait and see sometimes. Um, speaking of, I finished the main part of the blue pineapple lace skirt that was for her, is for her. Um, Oh, first, I did not knit this. A family member did, but they gave it to me a long time ago, before I met um, Inanna, but I was just given yet another blue thing. But it's a shimmery, intensely sky blue yarn. I think it's just in stockinette stitch. Yeah, I do know enough about knitting to know that. Pardon me, and... This yarn is discontinued, but it was originally from Hobby Lobby. Um, I didn't mention that last time. I, I forget the name. But, um, yeah, I, just a side note, I, 
I don't blame anyone who does or does not shop at Hobby Lobby. There are certainly reasons not to. Oh, sorry about that, nerds. <laughs> Something in the other room. But also, like, I don't think it's... I don't think anyone's horrible for shopping there, because they're, you, you know, sometimes you have limited options, or you, you just know, unfortunately, in, individual pur purchasing power doesn't really, it, it's not going to affect social change. That's my view anyway. Social change should, can and should be affected, but not by where one person decides to get their yarn, probably. But that, that said, if you don't, if you feel like you want to and can get your yarn someplace whose morals you agree with, that's also fine. So, anyway. Now on to the skirt. <laughs> I was asking my family member where they got this yarn, because I ran out at one point, and they, they told me, well, I looked on the Hobby Lobby website, and I was like, I, I can't find it. And, and then they said, oh, it's just discontinued. But luckily, they sent me a link to Force Canes on eBay, and I was like, oh, okay, well, thank you. Could, could have told me that sooner, but I guess I'll just go ahead and buy buy these. Um, okay, Gwen and Inanna, here's a, um, I think my exact words were, here's a, here's a devotional for these because it was forty dollars or something. And I was like, well, sometimes you just need to. I I don't have a lot of income, but I do have like some money of my own, so like I, I do always have to think carefully about what I buy, but it was definitely worth it. Okay, pineapple lace scarf, skirt, it's a wrap skirt. You know, as I've said before, it's an overskirt if I'm wearing it in public. Anyway, pineapple lace, there's some silver sparkly yarn in here too, um, and there's a lot of I, I ran out of, or I started to ran, run out of the last skein, and I was like, I might want to make a top. So I started using other yarns. There's some red and gold bits and bobs that I have, and I held some of it together with um, various shades of gold embroidery thread. We have this huge basket in the general crafting su supplies of just all the random um, embroidery thread that someone got at one point, and it's been sitting there for months, so I'm like, well, it's probably fine for me to use it, and if not, it's DMC, so it can pretty easily be re replaced. And here's... Um, this part of the edging, I went completely silver, and you also use this white fluffy yarn for more of a spider web effect. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to do next now that the skirt portion is finished. I think my my golden and blue rose, like that papery fake flower f fabric. I, I have some of those r roses. Um, may find a home like on the waistband or something. And I, I feel like it needs golden bells on the bottom. <laughs> I have some bells, but I'm not sure they're the right type. So I may just include a, a way of the easily, like, they can um, um, easily be hooked on and off just in case I get better bells at some point. 
and it, it needs a drawstring too. And I, I think I know the yarn I'm going to use for that. But I feel like right now it just needs to like sit there and wait. Like I'm, I'll find out at some point what I'm supposed to do next. <laughs> oh, I do want to try the technique of crocheting around my gold and silver wire that I have. Um, I've done that once before with black crochet thread and silver wire for a choker that I made. Um, I've shown you art, like pixel art of it in the past episode, but not the choker itself. I might show it at some point, but not, not yet. Speaking of crochet, yes, I have not worked on the Hades shawl. Um, just haven't been up to much, and yeah, I'm like, when I'm this blah, I just need to probably just take care of myself. Hades was one of the gods who taught me <laughs> to put, to take care of myself and put my own needs, I mean, first when they need to be, so I feel like if I tried to power through on his show, which I'm doing for a friend who's, who's devoted to him, but still, like, I feel like that wouldn't fly <laughs> with either him or, or this friend, so. Um, or with Gwen, you know, my patron and lord, he's, he gets a say too. But I do have more of this neck. This is black and red snack who has um, little button eyes in red and gold. She's going to be a scarf. And she's almost long enough, but not quite. Why does it take so long to do um, the amigurumi? But anyway, I'm quite happy with how she's turning out. I had a friend, or have a friend, who <laughs> looked at her. That I I was chatting with this friend over Zoom, and this this person was like, "Hmm, that's kind kind of scary." Okay, uh, but she said it in this completely like just very res respectfully wary way like hmm okay like <laughs> the goddess that this this reminds me of who some of us call Ser serpent M M mother is kind of scary in a um good <laughs> good way and even without being pagan like though i've, I've told this friend some, some about my past but like i feel like she definitely got it, even if she didn't see it the same way I do. But I, I just very much appreciate her um, reaction. So <laughs> I have no idea how Banos would react to the serpent mother's neck. But I'm sure he would also be this respectful banros the goat but banros the future the um the vicaro formerly known as banros they they take on a new name it's all the same name <laughs> vicaro at least in the previous time in which they were vicaro i'm talking about this book again Um, most of the stories are set thousands of years ago, and it's kind of historical fiction, but also in our personal belief system, like, it actually happened in some way, whether it was literal or, like, story truth, we don't know, but anyway, so that's what I'm talking about, but <laughs> I'm sure that he would also be 
respectful because you kind of have to be. You have to respect serpents and dragons. I um I think in order to be the Bikaro. Well, that's a good ending point for part one. Here in my midnight ballroom, it's time for the end of part one.